Good afternoon, gardeners. It is Sunday, March 29th, and today is a day nearly a year and a half in the making. Today, I'm finally going to plant some fig trees in ground at my house in my garden. You'll see in front of me, I have selected six fig trees for my collection for in-ground planting. And if you want to know why I selected these six trees, I'll link to the video above where I explain why I chose these six varieties as worthy to go in ground in my climate. You'll also notice that I have a fully prepared garden bed here with some terrace board and some compost down with some good looking soil. And I will also link to a video above where I show you how to prepare an earth bed for in ground tree planting and it is raised a few inches. I do recommend in general you plant your fruit trees in a raised bed of some sort or on a mound if you can for adequate drainage because very few trees like sitting in water and having their feet wet as we call it and fig trees come from Mediterranean climates where it's pretty dry most of the year so they're not going to do well if they're in a heavy clay soil where they're going to be wet all the time. It's good to be in a faster draining soil and it's always good to have them elevated a little bit so they have better drainage. When planting any kind of fruit tree, the first thing we want to do is discuss the depth of the hole. Fig trees are pretty unique because they readily send roots from the nodes that grow along their trunks and stems. So they're one of the easiest fruit trees out there to root. Because of this, some gardeners tell you to plant your fig trees low, because if you plant them low, you'll bury more nodes and more nodes are more likely to root. I'm not really fond of planting any kind of tree low. I want to plant my tree either at grade or higher than grade. Fig trees root vigorously and when I pull my roots out of these buckets you'll see the root balls are pretty large. I don't see any reason at all to plant them deeper than they need to be. They will root very well with the root masses that they have. So I'm going to plant my trees all pretty flush with this raised bed area and this raised bed area in general is about three to four inches high. So if you actually do the math on what I'm doing, planting them flush with a raised bed area translates to planting them high. The next thing we want to discuss is the shape of your hole. I have two shovels here. On the left I have a square shovel and on the right I have a digging shovel. I'm going to link to a video above called the number one mistake that people make when planting a tree. I suggest watching that. It's a short video, but the short story is the number one mistake that people make when they dig a hole to plant a tree is they take a regular digging shovel and they just dig a hole. And the digging shovel tends to make all of your holes basket shaped. They will be very round, almost like a U. And what happens is that encourages the root ball of the tree to spiral around that hole that you dig. So I suggest making a square hole. It's hard to dig with a square shovel, but I do recommend that you dig your hole with a digging shovel, then you take the square shovel and you square up the edges and you create some 90 degree angles. And you also make sure that you level the bottom of the hole so it doesn't create a basket-like effect. Because you'll have sharp angles in your digging hole, that will prevent the roots from spiraling. You don't have to use a square. You can make a triangle. You can make a pentagon. You can make a hexagon. It doesn't matter. What you really want to have is just sharp angles that prevent the root mass from spiraling around. And here in front of the camera are an arsenal of fertilizers that I'm going to use to plant my fig trees to get them off on the right foot in ground. If you've been following this channel for a while, I talk about fertilizing all the time, so I'm going to try and make it short and sweet in this video, and I will link to a video above that goes in depth about fertilizing your fig trees. For those of you who are new to this channel, I will give you a quick summary on fertilizing your fig trees. I have two types of fertilizer here. I have granulated organic slow release fertilizer and rapid release soluble fertilizers. On the left, you will find Nature's Care Organic Granulated Fertilizer, and right to the right of that, you will find Organic Bone Meal, which is an outstanding source of organic phosphorus. These are both organic slow-release fertilizers, and organic slow-release fertilizers require the microbiology in the soil, which is your bacteria, your fungi, little tiny worms, 
to consume that organic fertilizer and to excrete it into nutrients that your plants can use. The fertilizers on the right are your expert gardener all-purpose chemical soluble plant food, Epsom salt, and fish emulsion. You mix them all in water, it will dissolve, and those nutrients are readily available to uptake from your plant. So they will be able to use that nutrition immediately. It does not have to be broken down by the microbiology in the soil. Now all of the fertilizers that you see in front of you are organic except for the Expert Gardener all-purpose fertilizer. If you want to be 100% organic, I suggest removing that and just adding a little bit extra slow-release organic granulated fertilizer. However, I do find that the chemical solubles help with the transplant shock and I'm trying to get my trees to establish as quickly as possible and put on new green growth and the high nitrogen content inside of that fertilizer is great for that initial flush of growth. So I'm using this to accelerate the growth of my trees. If you want to be 100% organic, just exclude it. I've removed all the trees from their pots and this is what the root mass looks like. You'll see it has really great root development. That is a nearly one year old root ball. So because it's been inside of a pot, the first thing you want to do is you want to fluff up these roots. You want to break them up on the bottom because they are all root bound. So I'm going to take all of these and I'm going to grab them and I'm going to pull them to free them up. And they should look like a plate of spaghetti when you're done. You just have to make sure that you don't damage the root mass. You just want to free them up. So don't be too aggressive, but it's not a big problem if you damage a few of them. It's going to happen, but you definitely need to rummage around here and free them up so they grow down where they're supposed to grow. Now that I have fluffed up all of my root balls, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start applying my organic slow release fertilizers. And I'm going to start off with my organic nature's care fertilizer, which has an NPK of 769, which is 7% nitrogen, 6% phosphorus, and 9% potassium. I usually use a 555, but I got this on a killer sale, so that's why I'm using it. As long as the numbers are close together, if you use a 555, a 444, a 454, a 546, just make sure the numbers are close together and you'll be fine. So I'm going to take two big handfuls of the all-purpose fertilizer and put that on the bottom. And then I'm going to take my bone meal. I'm going to take a handful and I'm going to dust the bottom of the planting hole as well as the sides of the planting hole. And phosphorus helps develop the roots of the plant. So it's important to plant them in a phosphorus rich environment. Then I'm going to set the plant inside the planting hole just like that and I'm going to take the phosphorus and I'm going to dust the whole root ball with that bone meal. And if you can't find bone meal you can use garden lime. That should work as well. It's very important to be generous with the bone meal. I'm going to take one half of a handful and just put a little bit of the organic fertilizer on top and then I'm going to start backfilling the planting hole. And now all of my fig trees have been planted. They're in a nice straight neat row and all of the soil has been compacted around the root ball and you'll notice that I have my fig trees angling in towards the fence a little bit. That's because I want them to grow away from the yard. Fig trees are pretty easy to train, especially the new green growth, so I'll be able to use stakes and I will be able to tie them against the stakes and direct how my fig trees grow. Now that they're all in, I'm going to water them in with a garden hose to saturate the soil. And now I'm going to mix all of my soluble fertilizers. I'm going to start with my all-purpose plant food, which you can see right here. And if we simply follow the instructions on the back, we will see for outdoor plants, it specifically says to mix one tablespoon per gallon of water and apply generously over leaves and stem. So I'm going to use the recommended concentration of one tablespoon per gallon. Now this is a five gallon bucket, so we're going to put in, you guessed it, five tablespoons and we're going to use the little scooper that comes with the product. Then we're going to water them in with a little bit of Epsom salt. Now Epsom salt is to prevent magnesium deficiency so it's not something that you need to use often. I already gave them a little bit of 
Epsom salt on my first fertilizing of the year. And that video I will link to above. So I don't need to add a whole lot of Epsom salt. I'm just going to put in one tablespoon just in case. And then finally, I'm going to use my secret weapon here, Alaska Fish Fertilizer. And while Alaska Fish Fertilizer is not an incredibly strong fertilizer, it is fantastic for trace minerals. It is full of nutrients because it is ground up fermented fish. So we're going to shake this really well, and we're going to put a nice big glug of fish fertilizer in there. That's probably about a quarter cup or so. And that gives your fig trees all kinds of nutrients. Then we're just going to add water and fill it up to the top. And the final thing we are going to do is we are going to put down an organic compost and then top that with a natural hardwood bark mulch. And it's important that you use a natural shredded hardwood bark mulch because that mulch is going to break down over time and it's going to deliver nutrients to your soil. Do not use a dyed mulch. Dyed mulch is generally junk wood like old pallets that are ground up and then they add some kind of chemical dye to it for long lasting color. That is poison that will be leaching into your soil over the years. So I strongly recommend you only use a natural hardwood bark mulch. If you can't find it, something like pine bark nuggets are just fine. Same thing with pine straw. Now two things are important when you apply your compost and your mulch. The reason why we are applying compost on top is to give these trees a slow steady form of nutrients as it breaks down. The reason why we are using the mulch is to insulate the soil underneath and to prevent the sun from having too much evaporation on the top of the soil. Mulch maintains even moisture levels, but because mulch decomposes, you don't want it touching the trunk of your tree. It's important that you leave a several inch gap between the trunk of the tree and the mulch layer. The other thing that you're trying to do with the mulch is to keep the sun rays off of the roots. Remember, we planted these trees a little bit high, so after a nice heavy rain, some of the roots will be exposed. We're trying to protect those roots from the direct sunlight. Now that we have our mulch down, we can apply the fertilizer that I just mixed. And remember, we just made five gallons of soluble fertilizer, so we are going to evenly distribute this between the six trees. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you plant a fig tree. I'll keep an eye on these, I'll watch them grow, and I will be sure to give periodic updates throughout the spring and summer as they continue to get bigger and bigger. Everyone, thank you so much for watching today's video. If you found it helpful, please hit that like button, give it a thumbs up, and if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please subscribe for future updates and more videos like these. If you're curious about any of the products that I use in this video or in my garden in general, everything that I use is linked in my Amazon storefront in the video description. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see all of you again on the next video.